and we're live. Are we? Can we stream, or are we just going to cancel again, Tyler? It, let's cancel. Let's cancel now. We've been up for about five <laughs> seconds. I think we should cancel <laughs> because the live brushes have been hanging in there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for sticking yeah. around, everyone. There, we haven't been. At, we've been out for like now. a month, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That is crazy. Oh my Oof. gosh! Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to you, the live brushers. <laughs> and um, welcome back to you, Ray Bonilla. Welcome back to you, other person, co-host. <laughs> co-host co down at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, oh god what was it um it's like those um i feel like when the movie stars when they're going on a press junket and they're like just sitting in a room and having everyone from print come in or from like yeah. the media and you're just like i have no idea who you are you know yeah. <laughs> you're just yeah. hey, you know asking you know answering questions how you been dude good man it's been it's been a little wild i was doing a job for a company in Belgium. So I was actually in Belgium for a little bit. And that was wild. And now I'm home of the fries, back, man. back home of the fries. You know what? The fries are pretty good. Um, the waffles were really, really amazing. That, that That's no joke over there. Um, so I was, yeah, I was doing that. And I'm right. just trying to get back yeah. into the swing of things. How about you, dude? Uh, oh, jeez. I don't even know where I'm at. Hey, yeah, I think my audio is a little, little odd. Hold on one second. No worries. Technical difficulties, folks, but we're fixing it um, on the fly, as we always do here at Live Brush. Booming is that easy. Oh, wow. Now you sound pretty good. Now you sound buttery smooth. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Woo. How's that sound in the chat, everybody? How do you how do you like that? I don't know, we got a few viewers. Um, <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, Cranston Snord. Appreciate it. Much smoother. Yeah, I know it's like radio voice now. Radio Ray. Dude, this 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 is our I like our mics, man. I can't believe. Can't believe what. Oh, where'd you go? I'm just testing my audio on the stream. I'm hearing like double voices, so. Oh, yeah. wonder if it's from me. No, no, it's from me. It's from me, man. It's from me. All right. Well, I'm glad you fixed it. Um, my God, I sounded like I was like, you know, talking out of a like in the bathroom or something like that out of a tin can. Yeah. Before. I must've missed that. I, maybe it's cause I didn't have the, um, obviously I missed it cause you just had to fix it, but, um, maybe it's because I didn't have the context of how smooth you sound right now. Oh my and God. That, that had really thrown me off. Uh, you might be, like, you might be hearing blind. I, it's very possible. You know, I've tried to learn musical instruments. I've not been very good at it. It's very possible. I just can't hear. That could be, it could be it. I listened to a lot of Metallica in high school, really loud. So. Okay. Well, you know, a couple of those guys went deaf, right? Didn't they? I think. The basses go well, deaf in, uh, in Metallica? I don't know. I don't know. I know that. So is that who your heroes are? They're, they're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's lost their hearing from playing music too loud is a personal hero of mine <laughs> in the chat if you lost your hearing <laughs> playing music <laughs> oh man no nah, that'd be horrible no do it f in the chat everyone so what are you no 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 don't do it. what are you working on Not dude bullshit. i'm i can i'm continuing my okay so this is what i did i thought to myself when we took that break i was like you know it's not gonna be that big of a break okay famous last words and I was like, I'm not gonna, I, I'm, I, I don't want to touch this piece until we hit record again and stream. Uh, so this is my underpainting that I was working on the last episode. So no one missed a single brushstroke. I didn't add anything oh my gosh. except, 
except I added um, uh, matte medium over the top so I could just paint on top of it because it was a gouache lift out with like acrylic and I started painting acrylics and yeah, so yeah. I just sealed it with matte medium. That's it. That's the only thing I did. And so you cheated really, the audience out of that is what you're saying. I cheated the audience out of that. Yes. And I want them to know that, that it was the about, best part. About painting a transparent <laughs> sealant over the top of your painting. Yeah. What what a waste. I don't want them to know. Uh, what about, uh, listen, forget about me. I mean, people probably don't even <laughs> know never. where you're at, where, where you are, you know, because. I'm back, I'm back at home. No, no. But like, they're, they're used to you, seeing you like full frontal in terms of like your Whoa. a your 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 yeah I, I listen i mean everything i say and Whoa. <laughs> and and on a computer screen and you're not like there's a brush dancing around like people don't I even know, know man holy smokes everybody i'm going analog for this um yeah. i yeah i set up i spent today setting up my easel so that I could paint again, um, you know, from seasons past, we used to paint together in, in oils and, um, I'm doing it again. I have, I'm bringing it back. I, I did, you know, the first 11 episodes of this show, I did a digital piece. So it's mild, I'm mildly happy with it. I don't know if I love it, but, um, I think it turned out kind of cool. It, I would ultimately say the piece I did kind of ended up being like a sketch. And I could really tighten that up and make something cool out of it. But um, now I'm back on the easel. And I'm painting a portrait from a movie, a favorite movie of mine. And I don't know what was else to say Was it directed by an that. Italian person? It was. It's, okay, so this, everybody, Ray already, Ray already figured out just from the little light drawing that he saw earlier. Um, I'm painting Dracula from Francis <laughs> Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's really weird how in the end, like how that name turned out, like the title of that. It should have been Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. Why is it Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula? That's crazy. Um, anyways, I'm ranting now. But yeah, I'm painting Gary Oldman's character from said, the title character from said movie, Dracula. One of my favorite movies. Um, it's not from the 80s, but as Kate and I say in this house, anything up to 1995 is the 80s. So the 80s, hmm. 80s spans from 1977 to 1995. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> wow. I, huh. You can agree. That's fine. I can totally agree with that. I could totally agree. I kind of... I never, actually never thought about that. I always found that it was like a waste of time for me to say. I always used to say eighties, nineties, but yeah. really ninety five. What now? Why not? Why ninety five? You said ninety five, right? Yeah, um, I think. I think I say ninety five because I think um, what Jurassic Park was like ninety five, or was that ninety three? Um, just to be safe, you know, I want to be able to cover Dracula, which I think was like. I want to say 92 or 94, one or the other. Um, but I want to be able well, to cover Dracula, Terminator 2, which has to be covered in there, and okay. Jurassic Park. Uh, it's, it's really important to cover those as, as right. if they were 80s movies. No, that's true. That's true. I'll, I, I'd drink <laughs> Maybe to that hook if too. I were going. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Talking about drinking to that, I, we got Dunn Rook in the, the chat, the incredible Denman Rook, concept artist extraordinaire, art director over at Romero Games. What's up, man? Hey, Good man. It's been a while. That's all your awards for Empire of Sin. I, I, I always keep, I know that it's like, you know, like a year or two late uh, for that, but uh, they won a lot of awards for for that game, for the art specifically. So, he's uh, moved on too. Well done. He's, he's, yeah, he's it's moved awesome. out of there. Oh, he's no longer. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, him post. Oh, he just confirmed it in there. Yeah. He he moved somewhere. Where'd you go, Demon? Just throw it in the chat. Dude, just throw your address in the chat. Yeah, where are you living? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very um it's oh that's right. That's right. Sumo digital. Fantastic. Congratulations, man. Congratulations, dude. That's awesome. 
Um, but that is awesome. I gotta say, I gotta say, um, it's a very, like I, it's a very living in Ireland thing to say, Hey, I'm just popping in after pints at the pub. It's very, it's a very Irish thing. Cheers. It's not a very Irish thing. It's just a very normal thing. You're just not normal. <laughs> okay. This I've been to Dublin. True. I've gone to the pubs with Denman. Ah, oh, man, that sounds like a blast. I got to do that. Once Kate gets Denman, you hit up that citizenship. Oh, my goodness. David Peterson. Who, this David is Peterson. Talking about somebody I owe a pint. David Peterson is ready with a party of 24. Thanks, David. Good to see you again. We're back. <laughs> Old smoke. You're back. <laughs> God, I need to go back to town. This is some, oh, this is some inside joke stuff going on. It's right an now, inside. It? It's a great inside joke. Great, Just the guard great. prevail. <laughs> now leave me out of it. It was. That's why it was great. You were not there. We know that. We can confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the guard prevail. Hey, hey, gang. Thanks so much for for hopping in. Really appreciate it. Yeah, good to see everyone again, man. Dude, yeah, man. My God. I feel like it's been a long time. I know. It's only been, what, like a month? S- some might say a month. Feels like forever. I did want to like say... The... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say something nonsensical. Like, oh, so was I. I usually so... do. Oh. Let me hear what you were going to well... say. Uh, actually, yeah, I totally forgot. Oh, yes, I was saying that, like, I almost forgot how to do this. I mean, luckily, like, the whole setup with the cameras and stuff like that, that's super easy because I do that for my online classes. Uh, And my mentorship's over at uh, Smart School and Visual Arts Passage. So links in the uh, Moobot. Um, But just the, I don't know, painting two hours, talking with somebody on the other end, I just feel like way out of practice, as if, like, I haven't done it in years. Yeah, talking with me. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually feel a little out of it too, but um only because I moved into like completely different deal, you know, back on the easel. So I feel like right. I'm also leaning away from my mic when I talk, which is awesome. <laughs> I feel like I need <laughs> Dude, it's not know, easy. Maybe the chat can confirm this, but I feel like um, I, f- I just feel like I need one of those like mics that like clips to my glasses or something, but oh, it's God. always in my face. You know, the, what, the clips, clips to your glasses. Are you trying to reference the great Mark Carter? <laughs> That's true. He's getting arrested. I forgot Mark oh, Carter yeah, my... <laughs> has one of those. Um, speaking of Mark Carter, I mean, now that you brought that up. Um, You'll never be Mark Carter, Tyler. Okay. I know. No, I wouldn't even try. Wouldn't even try. De- we... Devin spot spot at the uh, the sirens coming up. My bad, guys. Dude, gotta do can you tell? The audio. Can you tell the the tell the cops or whoever's flying around out there in Buffalo <laughs> to stop driving around? It's ice cream. It's just ice cream. It's the summer. Just tell them, hey, <laughs> we got a recording going on over here, dudes. I know. Try to record here. Uh, um, so yes um, let me try and lean back over here speaking of Mark Carter I am using Mark Carter's paints right now um, the the um, you know what let me hold them up let me hold them up I'm going to hold them up in front of the camera everybody here they are Geneva Geneva Artist Oil Paints oh god it's out of focus I have to hold it about here um yeah, I love these guys. I've been really getting into them lately. Ray and I have talked about it quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just really, it's like never dry kind of oil paint. He puts a lot of um, safflower and clove oil into the paints. So they're wet for a good amount of time. And so th- I might actually, what will happen here is, I bet this will be wet next week. And I'll just be able to go right back into it. Yeah, so people might be asking, like, why why would you want it still wet and not to dry fast? They might be asking that, but they haven't, so we won't even address it. No. 
Um, the, so the reason I like this, this is kind of something that I've, um, you know, Ray's known, known about this for a while and he's told me about him, him, his painting like this, cause he's painted, you've painted similar to this for some time. Not that you do right now, but you have painted like this yeah. before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. The, the reason I like it is I like to work wet and wet. I like alla prima, um, which is that, that old. Is it Italian? Alla prima? It sounds Italian. Yeah. Um, it's an yeah, yeah. Italian term for painting wet into wet. So I like that sort of chunky wet and wet look and feel. And with Mark Carter's, um, the way he sets up his paints, the way he mixes them out, that's um, exactly what you get. You get super alla prima painting um, for long periods of time. So your paint will be wet for a long time. Um, I'd say I'm working on a painting right now that's not up here. Obviously, I can't show it, but it's been wet for a week and a half, I'd say. So it just allows me to stay nice and chunky. And and when I, um, I can keep those real thick, like buttery, smooth um, strokes. Um, so, yeah, that's why I like it. And that's why I'm going to stick to it for a while, I think, is my primary way of oil painting. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's the, uh, like for those who don't know, like, uh, we're not familiar with that. It's, it's when you're painting, uh, wet and wet, it's really easy to get soft edges and you can control edges really nicely and push cause you're pushing paint into in and out of itself. And that's the, uh, it's, it's a great advantage to oil paint. Um, and you could work colors into it, blend colors, soften things all at once. And so a lot of artists like to work directly like that so that um, they could achieve those, manage those results. And it's a lot harder to go over it once it's dry uh, and achieve the same effect. You have to kind of repaint it. And so instead of having, uh, instead of repainting it, Tyler just uses paints that uh, stay wet for longer so he doesn't have to go in that the you know so if an edge is you know uh too soft or or too hard he can go right back in on the paint as if it was painted yesterday and continue to manipulate it and you can and mark will even say this on on this geneva site with them um, at least on his youtube videos you can make this paint yourself he gives you the recipe um, Oh yeah, drawmixpaint.com, folks. Yeah, drawmixpaint.com, and it's it's all very fine tuned, which is why I like his paints, and it's a limited palette, which I also like. Um, he has a very tight amount of colors that he uses to mix and that he offers on the website. Um, so right. there's a lot of interesting stuff going on that I'm liking to play with um, lately in my oil paint work. So. Um, I'm having a good time and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm painting with today. Hey, Demi, thanks so much for, uh, uh, for swinging by, man. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Good seeing you, man. Um, come by again. I know it's late there, but next time keep working on your Irish doing good. Keep working on your Irish. He said he's been studying Irish. He's fine. He doesn't need your help. <laughs> I just get my encouragement. That's all. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. We got a couple questions um, from. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no worry. No worry. From, from MPL illustration. Um, why did you steal his paints? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I love it. <laughs> that is, that is funny. Well, my point is, is I don't funny. want Mark Carter painting anymore. And this is why I took his paints. Hey, he's such chill, man. He used to live he's in Hawaii. Done. He's in Austin now. You know, he's a portrait painter. And he's an incredible teacher, I'm... by the way, too. You know, I got to send Mark. I'll send Mark this episode, like, once it goes live on YouTube. Yeah, we should. He's an awesome guy. And I've, I've learned so much from his methods. You know, I, you know, both Ray and I learned to paint in oils, Shush, what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're not like... We're not like, we're middle of the road when it comes to, you know, being skilled in the way of, um, you know, we're not masters yet. Well, Ray is. I am not Dude. even close. Um, I, I would, yeah, I, is, no, I take that. I, I have to reemphasize that. Ray is a master at oil painting. No, I, I am not. I, 
don't even i i just basically cleared the the first lesson re, uh, the other <laughs> I just felt like what I, who, I forgot who I was talking to, but I was like, I just, I just, you know, I, I'm safe to say that I just figured out like the very basics of painting. Like I figured, I think I, I figured out the very basics of it. All right, so we made it. We made it to the basics. I'm way behind yeah. in the basics, but my point is now, of all this. Well, my point here is that Mark is is a master. So yeah, oh, yeah. Um, his methods that I've been studying on his on his videos and on his website. I'm just really enjoying sort of learning a completely different approach to oil painting than what I learned when I was in school. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, I like his, it's very straightforward. Like really, really just like, let's just get down to, here's a solution to an issue, you know? Uh, and he's not like, it's just really straightforward. I don't know how else to say, like, it's just mixing color accurately, taking your time, understanding how to just patience and stuff like draw mix paint is, uh, um, you know, his, his, uh, uh, YouTube is, he was also on YouTube. Uh, you should just check it out. Like you don't even like, like Tyler was saying, like he has videos and things like that and demos, um, you can buy. But he also has like a ton of it for free it, that uses the same techniques. You know, I think his videos are just a little bit longer, maybe, but like the ones that you could purchase. But he has all the like everything that he teaches is is right there. And uh, yeah. I mean, you have to take our, our word for it. I mean, his student work is incredible. Uh, I've done a lot of I've not ran into a couple of people that have actually painted with him, which is pretty cool. Oh, that'd be that'd be fun. I'd like to do a workshop with him or something. Yeah. I've been oh yeah. Enjoying I just, to, to. I've just been enjoying the fact that I can like leave leave this stuff for days, not have to worry about. You know, I'm so used to using dryers in my illustration work and and rushing oh, yeah. everything. I'm just yeah. It's so nice to be able to be just sit back. Um, I can just set the paint brushes down. I, I mean, another thing is you, I never wash my brushes anymore either so th th yeah that's a, yeah that's really that's mark carter he, it's like i watched from you doing you you know looking at you dad uh in terms <laughs> of like not washing a brush i have to buy that, buy that brush tip that's it's like so the great. thing i have to get so what we're talking about here is um something that mark also provides at geneva uh, this is wow this became an ad we forget windsor and Dude, we're done with that on you man i this know an ad um, in geneva you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen too is like, Mark, if we, if we plug him on this, he's going to like see us painting and be like, oh, guys, you're doing everything wrong. Um, yeah. It's like, <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be angry that you were making fun of his mic on his, uh, on his, I wasn't making fun of that's it. the mic. I'm, I'm not making fun of that. I really want a mic like that. I hate having to like lean too, in and out Tyler. away from this microphone. Sounds great. He sounds great. Yeah, I don't know I why agree. you're making fun of him. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I was making fun of it. <laughs> no, but um, what was I saying? I don't know. You, you distracted me. Well, we were, we were talking about like, you know, how we... Uh, actually, this is like a, a, a common uh, clickety clackety crow. Uh, it says it's super cool to see the difference between you, your guys' process. Hold on. There's some more oh sirens here. I apologize. Coming for you. Yep, nothing I can do there. Um, super uh, cool to see the difference between your guys' processes and the approaches. Hey, appreciate it. Yeah, um, nice. Thanks for, for, for coming. Uh, yeah, so like we, um, we learned that, you know, painting at the same time, but it's been, it's been a pretty long time. It's been what, like 14 years? Yeah. 2009. Uh, yeah. So we've, you know, th th things happen. You know, we, you, you evolve and you go off in places, you know, uh, and experiment with things. And so, but, you know, we come from the same kind of core fundamentals, which is, you know, why the language is so, uh, is shared, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I get maybe that's it, right? Like we, we know what he's talking about. But we, 
it's sort of coming from an angle that we're just not used to. Yeah. At least for me. Yeah. At least for me. I keep saying we. I don't know why I keep saying we. Me. I'm talking about me. Um, hold on. Wait, there's another question um, from Eric um, uh, Davisheim. Who is like Davisheim? That's like a a realm of of the Viking gods. Um, so let's see. What are you asking here? Um, okay. Well, this is for me, but I think Ray can address both of this. Um, yeah, do you use any glazing at all in your process? When I'm painting for illustration work, yeah, I do. I um, just make like little adjustments. I glaze over to darken things down and all that. But um, for this kind of work that I'm doing right here, no, like I, I don't plan to do any glazing. I want it to be wet the whole time. This was all wet and wet, all a la prima. How about you, Ray? Yeah, I mean, uh, I glaze a lot. Yeah, um, I'm going to glaze color over this thing once I'm uh, finished doing an underpainting. Uh, um, yeah, I, I find it super convenient. I glaze, uh, uh, if I'm working like this, I'll glaze a lot. Like Otherwise, if I'm working like with Tyler, the way Tyler is, like everything wet in the wet, um, if I do glaze, it'll probably be with an acrylic uh, underpainting. I usually do a pass with acrylics like uh, with just color. Uh, s straight up, um, and you've seen me do it. Actually, on old episodes, you'll you actually see me do it. Uh, I'll glaze with that uh, quite a bit, uh, but yeah, I think it's it's super viable. I mean, it's um, you know, I think like the uh, approach approaching oils and working digitally. There uh, is that was that the other question? Oh yeah, I see the other question. Can you talk a little bit about how you approach painting with oils versus working digitally? So like that kind of feet it sort of dovetails into what what um, what your first question was, and um, they're really the same for us. It's the same thing, you know. It's um, that's it, we basically follow the same steps. They're just executed a little bit differently because obviously they're different mediums, but. The thinking is like identical, you know. Um, like, I mean, Tyler. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, what I'm doing right here, doing this underpainting, loading the whites, it's so 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 opaque. I mean, that's you do that digitally. I mean, that's how you paint. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a really common way to paint digitally. As a matter of fact. Um, yeah, I hundred percent so, agree. I, I I think in I think in oil painting terms when I'm working digitally. So. That's how yeah. I kind of get my ideas across. Um, and that's if so if you ever like, you know, uh, uh, talk to us about like an underpainting is an underpainting. And what is an underpainting? You're solving your values and your shapes, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter what medium it is. If, the, if it's just value uh, or you could do a color underpainting as well, you know, but we value and shapes. That's the way we think about it. And um we learned to think that, I mean, the person that taught us thinking that way is, of course, Bill Mond. Oh, you know, uh, the lone wolf. <laughs> the wolf himself. <laughs> the wolf. The wolf. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking about it like Expendables. Or are you thinking like Harvey Keitel? No, the Expendables, like, four, what was it? Expendables 17 when uh, Chuck Norris showed up. Oh, yeah. Like five seconds. The only, What's the up, only PG. The PG-13 Expendables, the only one that was PG-13. You're kidding. That was PG-13? There was yeah, a PG-13 version? That, that's the only one. I mean, they might have done. They might have released a, a rated R one and, on DVD, but the, the theater one was PG-13 oh because God. of, apparently because that. of Chuck Norris. This is what I, this is what I heard. No. Is that he, he, cause he's so like, um, I don't know, straight laced now Ooh. that he didn't want to be involved in a. A movie with dirty words in it and stuff. Well, you tell you tell me Walker Texas Ranger <laughs> himself. Okay, kick people in the face left and right. Whether or not they deserve it doesn't matter. If you got kicked, yeah, you're, gonna, you're going reason. down. You're going down. <laughs> <laughs> like Shane, he was literally in the movie for like. I mean, we're talking maybe, like it twenty maybe, seconds. Yeah, maybe an hour's worth of shooting. I mean, like I'm, I don't know how much it probably he probably took longer 
to walk to set than he was on actually on on film. Um, <laughs> God, like, you know what? I hope so. I really yeah, but, hope so. But you know, but like somebody who's that you know was on set that little having that much influence on the movie wow yeah it, you know yeah, what I don't, know. I don't even know if it's true but what do you I spread I rumors <laughs> who'd you hear every day who, who'd, you, who'd you hear every day on live who'd you hear this from? spreading rumors <laughs> spread uh, can't blame Mark for this one no no way not this time yeah Oh god. So yeah. Oh, uh, what, what was I going to say about um, so MPL illustration says serious question. How do you use the process and how do you use that process in a professional capacity with within a viable illustration career? I have massive issues myself with oils and the effect of solvents in my daily process, and I actually had to switch to watercolor. Um, do you want That's me to switch. take a stab at this first, or? Uh, do you want do you have an answer? Um, go for it. I mean I have one, but go for okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So like uh for illustration stuff, if I'm doing an illustration in oils, um I will uh use uh you know, you can you don't have to use solvents at all. As a matter of fact, I don't use any solvents in my in my studio even for my my uh my gallery work. Um uh, so I use uh, a uh, mineral spirits. I'm uh, sorry, a uh, non-toxic mineral spirits, which is basically just oil. It's like an oil, um, just to clean my brushes. That's it. It, is, it has no odor to it. It's not toxic. Um, you know, uh, you could you could actually just take linseed oil or stand oil, put it in a little basin a jar and then use that to rinse your brushes out or don't use any solvents at all i mean a lot of painters that don't do that uh you know and i use when i do use uh medium it's very little because uh, i don't you know need any uh a lot a lot of medium and so even the way when i glaze um it's not with a lot of medium uh and so yeah uh I so you can you can totally do that, uh, you know. Other other viable options. I know a lot of people. They, I mean, Tyler's done this before. I know I've I've done this. Uh, you start off and do a lot of your painting in acrylics if you're really sort of pressed and you want to layer things really quickly, and then you finish it off in oils. It's super common too. So, um, yeah, it's not not necessarily an issue, and it all depends also on your your approach i mean how do you want it to look i mean like greg if you talk to greg manchus he'll tell you yeah you know well I've, he's been painting oils for i don't know over 40 years how long has been how long has greg been around oh, right man. yeah i, 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 I bet it's you know 40 years right yeah and he so like on, but he's he worked on the dune posters so yeah obviously <laughs> obviously 40 years <laughs> uh you ever see Greg? Uh, just have him tell you about the Dune poster. It's it's kind of heartbreaking, a uh, heartbreaking tale, you know. But uh, I, I'll let him tell you that, you know. Uh, but but you know, he paints in in a manner that's really it's it's really direct, kind of very similar to where you know what Tyler's doing, like chunky brushstrokes, you know, a la prima. He'll finish things off as he goes, um, you know. Whereas like. There are other illustrators that you know have super layered uh, approaches. Tim O'Brien, or um, I'm trying to think of like it was Donato, you know, uh, and yeah, yeah. they have you know different means of of uh, you know using different types of medium. So it all depends on kind of what it is that you're you're uh, Dan DeSantos, another another person, you know. Uh, it, you have a lot of like there's all these different options that you could do um, for sure, you know. Yeah, if I'm if I'm painting for illustration work, you know, which I've been doing a lot lately, um, in oils, sorry, um, not digitally. I I do use a lot of dryers, and I don't use solvents as much, but I use a lot of dryers, which are are just as bad. So you got to be careful with those. Um, be careful. But with this because method, oils, I'm doing. Oh, good. 
I was going to say the oils aren't, you know, if you don't use any solvents, um, uh, then, you know, you just have oils. And so the oils are just made with linseed oil or safflower oil. They're veg it's vegetable oil. So it's not, um, you know, so that that's one of those things too. So it's all depends on kind of where, where that is. And oil, it, oil itself doesn't, so the, the toxics aren't toxic. The fumes aren't toxic. Uh, unless you're painting with like alkit paints, um, right? Which have have dryers yeah. built into them. Yeah, then you're getting dangerous. Yeah, they got to just be careful with it. But I mean, I I have um, Tyler and I both have like air filters, uh, carbon air filters that we use um, to to scrub out any of like the heavy metals in the in the airs. You know, the vol volatile. What's it called? The VOCs, volatile chemicals or something? Organ volatile yeah, I think that's what they're called. Organic ke chemicals. You can probably hear mine running in the background here. I can't really control it. So there's probably like no, a no, plane. It actually no, it sounds pretty good. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. You know. But like with the, the what I'm what I'm doing right now though with like Mark Carter's uh, approach, like all this is a hundred percent safe. I'm using no solvents and I'm using no dryers. Um, so he'll even say it on his website too when he talks about his paints. This stuff is incredibly safe. Um, all there is, the only oils that are being used here are linseed oil, which is safe, and clove oil, which is safe. Um, what else has he got? Safflower oil. Um, I think that's the other thing he uses. Let me let me reconfirm that. Yeah, safflower oil. Those, these are all safe oils. I mean, you could, I don't want to condone eating paints, but you could eat these these um mediums the oils themselves yeah yeah i mean they're all yeah. aside from like a cadmium when i think mark moved to a bismuth yellow instead of cadmium yellow yeah um, so yeah. there's no leaded stuff anymore but I mean, no, the point the, is the, the, this don't is ingest safe. oils i mean, he was saying never do it we're never talking about it. like the, the li <laughs> like you could use lens you could drink linseed oil Oh yeah, my, that's it's just yeah. oil. Don't ingest you oils, know. everyone. Don't. I don't want to get in trouble here. Oil paints, yeah. <laughs> oil paints is what we're talking. You know, we're talking about the oil medium, that thing that it's mixed with. Um, yeah, don't don't eat your paint. It's bad for you. Donnie Donnie Malone the the third. I wonder if it's a Donnie Malone that I know. Um, what size are these? The boards. Uh you know, I don't remember what size. I'm on a nine by twelve. I'll just answer that right now. Uh, I think it's <laughs> I think it's eight by ten. I don't know. I gotta check. check here. This just in, folks. Ray doesn't even know what size he's painting on. I think it's eight by twelve, right? Nope. What is it? Wow. It's a 9x12. Oh, we're both working 9x12. Look at that. Hey, boom. Look at us. Look at us, right? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, uh, um, but yeah, don't eat your paints. I think that was where the last, where we touched off last. Don't eat, don't ever eat your paints. Uh, but with this method, there's no fumes, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about anything right now. Yeah. Usually with all those solvents, I'm always a little like, ooh, I need to really crank my filter up here. Yeah, I'm always like, I always have good good ventilation. And I use a really, for me, I used to use a lot of it. And then I was like, oh, I can't be doing this. And so I use a really small amount. Um, of what? Of solvent of, or ventilation? Of, <laughs> of 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 like things like liquid, you know. Yeah, yeah. If I do use like something that's fume or like alkids, I'll only have a few colors, you know, because I'll use alkids a lot for to quick to quick dry. But they don't they're not really fumey if I don't use a lot of them, you know. Uh, but yeah, I just you got to be careful. You got to treat this stuff with respect, you know. I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, just be careful. I mean, well, I guess some people like have developed allergies the, to them. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, or you know, you can develop all kinds of stuff if you're not careful with it, with these paints. They they're Oh yeah. cancer causing agents in them, so be real careful. Yeah. But do um, I mean to one, address one, the, part of the question he was saying was viability. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm talking over you. Oh, well, I was going to say one thing I would recommend too if you don't like linseed oil working with that cuz you know, sometimes that could be a little yellowy. Um the, the 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 oil that I love to use as um as a means of um rinsing out brushes if I you know I use for a while uh before I found this um it's it's uh this stuff is called terpenoid natural is what I have up in my studio um but it's just like an oil of some sort I'm not sure what what oil it is um but the oil I really loved using was walnut oil just get walnut oil put it in a brush cleaner, and you're good to go. Uh, I saw uh, Morgan Weisling do that. And I was like, sweet, I'm doing that. Yeah, that's why I use that brush dip, because it's, I don't even clean the brush out, man. I just dip it in there, and I put it on the rack, and it stays wet Dude, all week. That's what we, yeah, that's how we got into talking about this stuff, too. Yeah, the brush dip. Yeah, I need yeah. more, I need to get some of that stuff. Because I use that, that like, so that the uh, Turpoint Natural has an oil that, like, keeps the paint wet right but i wring out the brush and i just kind of put it in my airtight container and it's fine it's totally fine but you know i gotta kind of rinse it out every time but i want the brush dip because here let me i'll hold it up on my screen so people yeah, can see it yeah this is the geneva brush dip and as you can see on the back it is even as the ingredients listed it's artist grade safflower oil and two percent clove leaf oil that's it that's all mm. it is um and you can make that um if you wanted he even says so just make it if you want um but i just i don't i wipe the paint out of my brush and i dip it right into there and that's it done yeah it's it's pretty rad so go for it folks <laughs> everybody out there go for it uh, yeah i mean like it's uh yeah materials are fun and they're also dumb but they're fun <laughs> but they can be dumb too real dumb i mean it's fun talking sort of like craft on all this stuff yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm a fan i just you know i'm like <sighs> I get I get questions a lot like um, you know best practices and things like that and like it's just you know it's a lot of like fear mongering when it comes you know that you have like or just bad information too when it comes to paint and stuff and like because everyone's trying uh, when you get into like art what's archival and things oh, like yeah. that and like oh, yeah. oh, oh my boy. goodness man you could scare oh, yourself boy. half to death. It makes you yeah. never want to paint ever again, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess everybody be careful out there of the, there are like the archival purists, like the, oh yeah, you know, for lack of a better word, the like archival Nazis, <laughs> they're coming for like how archival you're going to be. Well, I mean, like if you ask a conservator, like a student of mine's, had asked me about this and I get this a lot like oh I heard you're not supposed to do x y and z or like I heard you're not supposed to do this or that you know like for instance like um I heard you're not supposed to uh mix um like clove oil for instance to to paint you know people have said that it darkens the paint but if you mix it directly and I've never had that oh problem. sure um yeah, me either other, other, like I, I talked to someone who had said, um, "Oh, uh, the panels, wood panels that I paint on, like, are they archival and stuff?" And they are, uh, but like wood is is a natural thing; it warps, you know. Um, but how stable is it? And like, does it expand, contract? It sure it does, you know. But um, is that viable? And it's like, yeah, as long as you're not like on the Bahamas, you know, one day and then you're transporting it back and forth between the Bahamas and like the Swiss Alps, I think you're going to be fine. Um, any, like with anything ever painted on earth, you're going to have trouble in those scenarios. Yeah. And it's just like, but also like 
I, I told so my 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 answer to you know my, my student was asking a couple of things and like I've heard this a, you know a lot so it's totally not like and I had wondered it too like you don't want to mess up your thing right you put a lot of time into these paintings but if like you ask a conservator what's what's going to guarantee my that my paintings going to last as long as possible uh, it's going to last the ages they're going to tell you things like don't paint on wood don't paint on canvas only paint on aluminum uh, dye bond. You know, something that doesn't expand and contract. Um, mm -hmm. And don't paint in many layers. Don't use mediums. <laughs> yeah, don't use so Just paint it in one, one layer. I'm serious. I've heard it. Yeah, I've, no. I've, I've, I know. I've, yeah. I've heard it too. Yeah. I mean, they're basically yeah. the equivalent of saying like, like sort of like lightly puff the pigment onto the canvas. Not even canvas, yeah. sorry. Onto the surface. And that's onto it. Onto the surface, like, yeah. If you yeah, don't do that's too it. much. <laughs> right. Don't Don't overwork it. Right, yeah. And like, you asked what's going to, so the question is, they're not looking at it from an artistic standpoint, it's from a conservative standpoint. It's like, what is scientifically their best, like best method of actually doing that so that it lasts, the painting as, lasts as long as possible. It's not about whether it's logical or viable or like <laughs> any of that. Like it's, it's, they're thinking about it from that scientific standpoint and like, so you know it there just be you know you don't don't worry just don't do anything as long as you don't do anything really dumb like what do i mean by dumb i should like things like uh, uh, sorry, I should, sorry i shouldn't say dumb uh anything like really drastic and what i mean by that is like combine mediums that are incompatible with each other for instance I could paint oil on top of acrylic, but I can't paint acrylic on top of oils, right? So if I paint acrylics on top of oils, it's going to flake off and crack, right? Right. This has to so do I know with mechanical that. binds. Right. Exactly. Uh, and so it just won't mechanically bind to to the acrylic won't mechanically bind onto the oil, but the oil can mechanically bind onto the acrylic. Uh, and so, yeah, and it's like. Or like painting watercolor over oil paint, you know, like it's not a good idea, you know. Well, so, yeah, and you know, from uh, your basic science class, oil and water don't mix. So yeah, putting water on top of oil not going to work. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, I'm, you know, but just you know, you're going to be okay. Don't do <laughs> things like fine, they, everyone. They're, they're people that they're also like. I know Frank Rossetti used to do this. Um, he used to stick his his oil paintings in the oven and set oh, yeah, the temperature right. so it would dry faster. And it's like, eh, you probably don't want to do that. Um, nope. You probably don't want to do that. Now, why did it work for Frank Rossetti? He painted really thin. Uh, it's not. And he doesn't have a he lot. He wasn't of, worried about it being archival <laughs> either. I mean, and he wasn't worried about being archival. And he's he's to a point now that you know i'm sure there there are many uh conservators that are willing to or institutions that are willing to pay the money to keep these things alive i mean norman rockwell is another example like he shellacked used shellac between every single one of his layers um of, of paint so that he could uh if he messed up a given layer he would just wash it right off with with mineral spirits with actual turpentine um and it wouldn't affect the paint layer. The only thing that would affect the paint layer would be denatured alcohol at that point, you know, when it comes to shellac. Not the most archival thing to do, but hey, there's <laughs> plenty of people incredibly, out there who... Uh, incredibly not archival, right? No, no. But... So, so there's a lot of different approaches is our, is our whole point here. Yeah, hey, do you. Do your research, you know, and blame Tyler if it doesn't work out. Yeah, um, easy to take. I can take the blame. I'm happy to. Um, although yeah. I won't, I got to say, don't eat your paints. I'm going to reiterate that. Don't eat your don't eat, don't eat your paints. Don't eat your paints, bro. Um, <laughs> but I think, well, I, just to kind of circle back. I think there was some sort of like um, part of the question was like the viability of it in 
in illustration work. Oh. Um, and I don't, I mean, maybe it is dependent on how you plan out your day, like working with oils that don't dry fast is probably useful. But for me, I have to use dryers cause it's just not, it's not viable if I don't, I can't paint, um, fast enough, I guess, because I have to wait on everything. So I, I really have to put in the, the dryers. Yeah, you know, and it also depends on your technique too, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. And what type of look you're going for? Hey, you know, these things take layers. You know, a layer to look and just take just these take layers. I mean, what do you, what do you, you know, it's nothing. Right, exactly. You do you know? Uh, if you're looking for that appearance, then yeah, you gotta you gotta use layers, or or you know, hack it so that uh, you can. And what I mean by that is like bring in other, other mediums, like acrylics. Oh, we got a question here. It's just Dave, um, first time viewer, right? First time chat from the viewer. Um, good to have you. So, do we use? Um, do I do like? So, personal lube to keep the acrylic paint open for longer too late oh i get it now oh boy ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, um you know what let's talk about this <laughs> i think you know what i think monkey house answered it so thanks monkey House. Yeah. appreciate it yeah um I, but on that note i don't like the extenders in acrylic <laughs> <laughs> Not a they do suck they do suck uh so dude i have to man i'm dying to talk movies with you oh okay what happened what'd you do i want to know if you've seen any new movies <laughs> you know i on the plane i caught up on a, with a bunch of movies um i saw Sp i saw the new spider-man oh you did oh, i gotta watch that one um I oh wait no I, I i did watch that one i did watch that one i did I rented the, it. Yes. The, mul the yes. multiverse one. Yes. I was like, dude, I have to watch it. I haven't watched it. Tyler, don't spoil it to me. And I realized, okay. like, oh, no, I did watch it. I haven't watched a Doctor Strange movie dude, that I, I haven't either. watched. I haven't either. Um, I, I really want to. And honestly, I really want to watch The Northman, but I haven't seen that yet either. Yeah, that one too, man. That's been blowing up my Instagram feed, like blowing it up. Every time so, I'm flipping through stories, every other story is like for a while. They must have ad, ad, bought a huge ad and buy for that. Dude, I think they and did. Just, I've clicked on a couple of Vikings. Like I've clicked like on a couple of Viking paintings. So I'm, I'm like right there. You know, I'm their target audience, I guess. Well, I'm a, I, I really, bleh, excuse me. I really like that director, um, Robert Iger. So, so what did he? He's did he got do? a. Um, if you, if you've seen a movie called The Witch, I've heard of the movie called The Witch for sure. Yeah, it's very good. Um, highly recommend it. It's it's weird. It's freaky. It's got a cool pacing, like a cool way of sort of demonstrating, not showing enough, not showing a lot. It it's just really good. Um, I get. Check it out. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But he, after that, okay. he did a, he might have done something else, but he did a movie called The Lighthouse, which is really crazy and stylistic. And they shot it in like a, an old time silent movie aspect ratio. And they used filters from turn of the century because they wanted to get a, um, they uh, let me back that up. The filters they used over the lenses were from the turn of the century, like early 1900s. Oh, that turn of the century. Um, so how did they? He wanted a. He wanted to get this really old timey look, but what the filters do is anything that's red they make black. So it gives it this like incredibly high contrast appearance. Ah. Oh. That's the one with, um, oh my God, 
I'm blanking on the the Batman. Robert yeah, Pattinson. Uh, Robert Pattinson and uh, Willem Dafoe. Right? Yeah, Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're really good in it. They these guys. Are oh, really okay. Nice. Jeez, and it's yeah. just a so, wonky uh, movie. It's, it's it's fun. Well, like there was this um, um, screenshot that I saw was a post up from Mike Mignola, uh, you know, because we're Facebook friends. Oh yeah, hey, buddies. Um, yeah, along with everyone else in the world. But uh, he, he t- it was like a woman screaming in a, gr- a gr- like kind of like roaring at a camera in the oh, trailer yeah. and i'm like does she have braces on and i'm yeah. like what is that and mike mignola was like for those of you thinking that you know whether or not those are braces those are actually carvings in the teeth yeah. pretty enough and right? apparently that was a the thing they did i'm like what yeah you see it in in skeletons too of like of medieval or early medieval so of like 800s vikings with the, they kind of like ground a groove across the front of their teeth, sometimes two, and then they would fill that with paint, so that they, yeah, they would look like, you know, when we look at it, it look like braces, but the the effect is pretty gnarly looking. I mean, like, I wonder why one of those people uh, coming at me. I'd be done, man. So, all right. So, I, got, I I definitely want to watch that. I want to watch the Green Knight. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen that one. It's on my uh, list. And then Love, Death, and Robots Volume Three. I haven't even watched Volume Two, to be honest with you. But two uh, check it out. Um, I love the first one. Me too. But that was like uh, 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 Alberto. Um, Mielgo, I think, is uh, how you pronounce his last name. Do you know? I'm you know? Sure. You know what I'm talking about? I think he I did uh, the w- a windshield uh, washer. He yeah. won a freaking yeah. Oscar, bro. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, did I tell you this? I probably told you this. That that ran into him one time. No kidding, really. Yeah, it was in on the highway way. You know who highway way is? No, no. It's a Chinese artist, contemporary artist, a lot of installation stuff. So I was at a show, Ivy Way show that I was checking out, and I saw this. I saw him. I saw Alberto in the gallery, and I'm like, dude, that's Albert. I was like, I know him, and I saw because I just saw a, a documentary on him because I loved his fine artwork, um, and I was like, who is this guy? And and I realized like he was in uh, in animation and film, and he. I think he was at the, he might have at the time been working on or just getting ready to work on Tron. Um, Legacy. The uh, uh, Tron, the TV series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm saying Legacy. It's not like you would have been old enough if it was Tron. Tron. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, he would have been, I think he's about 10 years older than us. Um, But he was. he was there and I'm like are you and so I walk up to him outside I'm like excuse me are you Alberto Mielgo he's like uh, how do you know this you know he's like why and he's like kind of freaked out and I was like no nah, no nah, man it's like I saw your doctor you waiting on <laughs> Vimeo <laughs> and he's like oh what <laughs> I'm like I just saw it you know sorry dude you know and that, but I was like a, I don't know I think I was. We were still at the academy, uh, or oh, maybe, sure. maybe wow. I just graduated. I mean, it was yeah. It was you know, yeah. So for those who don't know, he was the one, the one that was the basically the main artist who put together the was a huge part of the putting together the team and the art um, influence very much influenced the art uh, look or the style. I, I should say, I don't know. There's a better term for it. I, I can't find it, but of uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, he was like. Oh, a, man big part of that that so team good. but he he had left um at a certain point in the production process uh but he was a huge part of that team you know that happens that shit happens a lot but uh yeah he's got stuff there rob rupel is showing stuff that on instagram of concept art that he did for that so it's good stuff. 
Lord, uh, Lord Dermot says the best Viking of all time is is the one that one uh, is the one basically wrote. I was here in an old ruins in the corner of the Hagia Sophia. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, it's still there. You can still check it out. Me. So can you imagine wall. that yeah. writing that? <laughs> and like we're talking <laughs> centuries of past, and yeah. someone's like eight hundred years ago. No, so but sorry, probably it's probably twelve hundred years ago. Wow, it's like oh that my God, graffiti. Dude, the colors, the colors on this, folks are super whack i gotta tell you they're not accurate <laughs> we'll get your uh we'll get your mirror list set up that's what oh, we should well. do <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about how to do that it's pretty simple yeah do what are you talking about get your mirrorless camera set up oh yeah i might have to do that it, it's pretty simple just ask Kate. Kate knows. Yeah. Kate probably has she's, a thing. She's probably got it set up right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it's probably working. <laughs> it's probably got a setup working, no problem. Just so that <laughs> just to spite you. Just to show you. <laughs> oh man. So I, I'm just gonna you know what I like about this is I can just chill out. I can just go slow here. I don't have to rush. Dude, you don't have to rush. Ain't nothing drying. Yeah, it's all. It's gonna be wet forever. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I have like I put a little pile of this stuff on my palette and for a month. It's been there and it's completely <laughs> wet. <laughs> the clove oil provideth, man. It's it's legit. It's legit. Oh my yeah, god, that made my eternally wet. My side hurt. Oh. Just the idea of Kate like watching you struggle and then going upstairs without your knowledge and just setting up the setting the setup that you had wanted the whole time yeah. and just having a blank stream on like no one's even there yeah. <laughs> oh god probably how it's going yeah yeah oh that's too funny um i don't know why so okay so um if it, uh Two things. Okay, so that I want to update you with that. We got to talk about Spider Man for a second. But once we do, well, in a second, uh, I will also say that I did get Star Wars Squadrons. Did I tell you that? Yeah, dude, you and, did. You and did. Um, Jedi Outcast, thanks to your recommendation and the recommendation of the chat. Outcast. And, Wait, I recommended that? Sorry. Fall yeah. Order. Fall in Order, my bad. Fall yeah, order. dude. Oh, man. Fall in Order. Prepare yourself. Um, I I played the intro and some like the, the very beginning parts, and it's like mm -hmm. incredible. Um, and I just finished up just because I needed like an action movie, like an ex ex expendables in my life. Um, Call of Duty Cold War. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, you gotta but, play this wait. single player. I haven't. It's, I love it. Sounds, I thought it was. I haven't played a Call of Duty in forever, man. Those are well, good it's games. perfect then. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's just. I mean, it's pretty quick. The I mean, it's not like a forty-hour thing. You know, that's the thing about the time investment. Time investment for me is is a little rough. So hey, you can't put I forty hours jump. into into a game. I'm gonna, <sighs> dude, I can't do it now. I can't do it now. But. Oh, I I can't either. I think I only play one game just so that I can only put hours into that. Yeah. But it's just, you know, like when you start something too, like you gotta like like the fallen order, it's like, okay, here, that's the intro, but like we want a mission. You gotta spend like an hour, a couple of hours, yeah. you know, just getting that done. And it's like, well, I don't know if I got that, you know, so uh I like maybe an hour and a half, you know. Um max so i want to like have finish something you know and that's where like call of duty came in that's the only reason why you know but it's beautiful though man i mean the the these games are they're really inspiring artistically it's like man those people who are working on that game these games are just they are top notch they're getting some serious you know? artists these days i gotta say dude I, mean, you know, they have, I guess for years but man they are getting some absolutely incredible artists 
Good for them. It's like, yeah, it's 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 so great to see. I mean, me- mechanically, games now. I mean, they're just getting. I don't know a lot about video games. I used to know a ton because that's like what my dream was to per- was to work in the video games when I was, you know, a kid. I you know I just I knew every you know everything. I mean, I was subscribed to game pro was on I, mm-hmm. the, old, the original ign when it came out like every day you know um looking at just basically you know uh, have you ever heard of digital foundry did i tell you about these guys i think so i think you told me about yeah it. basically they're just like they're, they're incredible um youtube channel um that analyzes like techno graphical technology and things like that like that's that's their forte that's basically what I would do. I would run around looking at textures on video games. Like, oh, look at this sweet, you know. <laughs> and if I, like, break the camera a little bit, I can see myself or see the model, you know, and see how it was put together, you know. Oh, yeah. But see, see like, I mean, just walking around on just these games, man. Oh, my God. That's what I, it's like, like. I've been playing. I think we talked about this last. I've, I've played a lot of Elden Ring lately. and oh yeah that's I just, right i totally forgot about that that you got that so hard but i want to just walk around you know i i just want to walk around and look at stuff so who was that from software yeah that's from software okay all right so we talked about this because i talked about how i played armored core Remember that i oh, had played a, that's like way back right yeah yeah playstation one you know like i was like hell yeah and did they also did uh no they didn't do that game trying to think um ah, it was a fighting game i don't know if from software actually did that fighting game i don't know they did it was I mean, about, they're it was known like, for the dark dark souls games but. right oh yeah yeah totally like did they do bloodborne yeah as well that okay. one's my visually probably my favorite because it's it's all like gothic horror and but also also like a ton of um like lovecraft and creepy crap like that right it's i mean it looks incredible i've, it's I've seen really st- i've seen videos game. of it you know um like that's yeah that's a bit what you were saying like i just want to walk around yeah that's totally what i w- want to do like uh just walking around is like it's like it's just seeing the ass irritates me and with some of these games where it's like the from software one specifically is that they're so hard that I don't get to walk around. That's all I want to do. Well, just like presentation wise, you know, um, there are they, uh, they're Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. They're Japanese. Studios. Yeah. I mean, that's just like, there's that there's like, uh, was it a ghost of, uh, Tokyo? No. Uh, Tsushima. That was a sucker punch. That was up here, in Seattle. Oh, really? Yeah, I knew a few people who worked at that studio. That's that. That's another like super fun. Talk, I only dude. played a little bit of it. I'd like to actually dig through it some more. But man, that was a cool game. Well, also like the. Um, I just love like that one, one thing I think I need to get God of War as well. Totally. Like it's, it's on PC and Uncharted. I hi- the, highly the, recommend God of War. I played like the original, like the first couple of them, you know, back oh, in yeah. the day. And I just, yeah, remember. I played some of those too, but this one is like a complete reinvention for me. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Santa yeah. Monica really like they really stepped it up for, for this God of War. Those, how good are those guys? And they're so good. That's a, that's one hell of a team, and they're like, yeah, I, it's man. Just I watched yeah. the making of, and I was like, man. I hope they got all the awards that there are in the world for that. It's, well, good for like you know. Uh, I mean, there's there's something about. I mean, video game development has been like democratized so much to an extent now. I mean, I had a uh, that it's phen- phenomenal. You can have a small team. But these yeah, like AAA yeah. studios, man, they're, it's just like some some of their these games. You know the the mechanics of the games. I was gonna say like mechanics really haven't changed all that much, which is probably a, uh you know like in those types of games. Um, yeah, but it's it's also like a broad appeal type of game. I I understand. I get it. Um, but I mean like 
during the time of PlayStation, PlayStation Two, and I mean, people were trying crazy things, you know. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's how you package them now. I mean, when it comes to mechanics these days, they're not well because they're all they're, they're like, hugely different. But yeah, and but I think it's because it's just so expensive to make. I mean, like you couldn't make you can't make a game like you know a triple A game with like two people or four people. You know, like like Crash Bandicoot. It was like made with like what two four four six people. I mean, like yeah. I don't know if I remember. You know, it's a really small. It was like a stupid small team. Like Naughty Dog now is like maybe their you know their their catering department. You know, yeah. is I fucking love Naughty Dog three times the size of what they you know what the original studio was. You know. Yeah, I love that. I love that studio though. Damn, they do such good work. Like I haven't played Last of Us. Haven't done that. But I just that, I don't have a PlayStation either. Yeah, the, it's an exclusive, right? But it's it's so good. I mean, God, if you can find a way to borrow one just to play it, uh, or or hopefully, two. hopefully they, uh, you know, because they've been releasing games on PC, which is crazy. Yeah, I I would love to see them do it. I, they might not because of their deal with Sony and the fact that I think they're owned by Sony. Well, I mean, but, God of War is on PC. Yeah, but that was um, Santa Monica, right? Not not yeah, so, yeah, but Sony. Does Sony uh, own. Does Sony own them too? Sony know. Santa Monica. Yeah. Oh, they own Santa Monica. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, they yeah. will. Yeah, maybe they will. Yeah, because they, Sony so. Dog's releasing uh, uh, Uncharted on PC. They're re- remastering oh. uh, the last one, the last two. Okay, then, yeah, you'll correct. see The Last of Us coming out for sure. So I'm like, yo, get me, yeah, get me that game. I was thinking more like... Um, I love the Uncharted games. They're super fun. Yeah, see, I got to do that. And Don, oh, So Donnie, Donnie, asked, Donnie Malone third asked, uh, did you play Cyberpunk 2077? I have not yet. Because it was one of those games where yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, I don't. Want, it's an RPG, and I would get sucked in, and I just don't have mm-hmm. the time i really should get it next sale i should get it like i mean i think it's a game that i have to kind of get i just want to walk around that's a game we can walk around you know yeah um, I, I definitely want to play it and I'm, i have huge respect for cd project red and the games that they make so i would i would love to play i mean i know they're gonna they'll fully release it right I, they, they're not like in full release yet i still think because of the they had that little bit of a disaster oh yeah that's right they 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 still have uh add-ons planned right yeah i think they're i think there's some more i don't know what they plan to do but i think they got a lot more planned well it's it's, see that's like one of those games like i have every single one of the tomb raiders and i haven't played i I haven't really (laughs) played one of those like dude like i haven't played any of that and i've i'm dying i should just i need to play it it's hard man there's so many there's so many it's hard to keep track of them all. And there's so many Kikiti hours clack, uh, of them. Kikiti Clack Clo uh, said, have you guys seen any of the super massive games? Mm, Which one? What's super massive? Super ma- yeah, I'm not sure. What do you mean? Uh, let's see. I have been playing, a tiny speaking studio. of games, though, I have, Kate and I have been playing this game called V V Rising is a vampire game. Super fun. Dude, is that the one with the, is that like the battle royale with vampires? Um, I think that is a mode. We're playing sort of like a closed server, but it's got like Diablo qualities to it and and like build your own base qualities. Um, it's fun. It's super fun. Yeah, I see. I gotta hmm, I gotta do that. And your ample is smaller time. Coming? I know, right? <laughs> I gotta get better as like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking buying all those games. Like even like, have you ever played um, uh, ukulele? Were you a fan? Were you a fan of like? Uh, did you have like N sixty four, like the rare games? Um, back in the day, I had N sixty four. But I'm not sure which games you're talking about. Like rare, like Banjo Kazooie, um, oh, oh. uh, Jeff Force Gemini, and I didn't, I didn't have those. 
had the N64, oh. but it was. It says it was a like, lot. They did. I think my they brother did and I just played Goldeneye. Yeah, that's all we. Played. Yeah, they made. Mario they made. Kart. They create. They created Goldeneye. They made oh, okay. Goldeneye. Well, I loved Goldeneye. And Perfect Dark. Did you do Perfect Dark? I remember when Perfect Dark came out, and I remember just being like, "Oh, this isn't like Goldeneye." But I was a dumb kid. <laughs> it's an incredible. It's an incredible impression of yourself from that age. <laughs> I, I remember. I just remember all that press. It was like it's gonna be like Goldeneye, but better. And then we got it, and we're like, oh. it's not. Uh. It had, uh, you know, it kind of was better than Goldeneye in specific <laughs> ways. So many ways. It was. It was. It was actually like, like Cyberpunk, almost like what it seems like Cyberpunk, like a, like very much like a shooter RPG, that type of deal, you know. Oh yeah. Um But yeah, I mean um Yeah, I have to I should play that again. You know. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, I it's not like, like kinda like of yeah, of course, right? <laughs> of course like when my time is just shrunk to no nothingness, I get it yeah. I actually get a thirty ninety and I can like see these oh, things, nice. see these games, you know. You can play all the games. With see a PC, get a PC, just get a PC in general, you know. Like, uh, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, dude, it's 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 cool. I, I I like looking at that stuff also because it's just um. Whoa, look at this raid we just got. It's massive. Oh, Van 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 Leer. Oh my God, two hundred eight people. Thanks a lot, man. Much appreciated. What? Ben, thank you so much, Ben Van Leer. Wow, do oh, you know Ben? Go. No, I, I mean maybe I do. I'm not, you know, I don't know people by their Twitch names. So, thanks, Ben. Dude, you rule, awesome, man. man. That's awesome. So, yeah, well, well, to all the newcomers here, Ray and I are just painting away. I'm painting Dracula. Yeah. Uh, Ray's I'm working uh, on a personal piece. It's looking amazing. Yeah, I'm working on a gallery painting, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, check out VLDL on YouTube. Okay. I saw dual streams of paintings. Had to raid. Sick, man. Hey, thanks. Man. Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, see? Yeah, the Twitch name is in his name. Well, we don't know that, too. I mean, like, you know, Dr. Disrespect is probably not a doctor. Oh, he's not on Twitch anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's one of the guys. But you know what? In, Sweet in today's, Ben. In this day and age, your, your name can be who you are online. That's true. That is true. You that is have true. Your you could have it your way, yeah. Man, so I'm I'm struggling on this painting over here, mainly because well, maybe I made Ben the... can help you. Maybe <laughs> Ben can help you because you know Ben's outrageously smashing. That's awesome, Ben. Thanks so much for rating. Ser seriously, awesome. Uh, yeah, man, really awesome. Well, let's just, well for, let's tell everybody about ourselves. So uh, I'm a uh, fine artist and illustrator uh, uh, out of New York and um i do a lot of gallery work uh now i've done uh like a lot of mostly editorial illustration some advertising uh but now i've been focusing mostly on gallery work and my good buddy over here who, who are you uh tyler i am tyler jacobson i am an illustrator uh mostly illustrator i do some concept work as well which i've been doing a little more of lately and I work out of Seattle, Washington. But Ray and I went to art school together in back, gosh, when did we graduate? 2009? 2009, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we graduated back then, but you know, we put this stream together as a way of kind of bringing back the, the way we used to work. Um, once we got out of school, well, when we were in school, we had studio space together. And... We just kind of hung out and painted all day. So we wanted to recreate that atmosphere here. Yeah. And just to give, get an excuse to hang out basically and talk movies and stuff. So, which uh, is mostly what we do on here. We, we, yeah, we talk know. about painting, but <laughs> yeah. honestly, we yeah. mostly talk about movies. It's a, it's a, it's a, ben is uh, passionate about art, Elder Ring, sweet, nice. and acting, and uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Sweet, man. Oh wow! Cool. Oos. 
Um, I know a know small amount of the, about that, but you know, Ray's dad's the martial arts expert, so we just we'll Google it, on. bro. We'll make sure we get him on here. <laughs> <laughs> just Google it. Google, you know Brazilian that. jiu-jitsu? <laughs> yeah. Just Google oh yeah, it. I know. I mean, I know about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but not enough to talk on it. Talk on the subject. Yeah. It's got a fascinating history. I think you would really like it. There's actually a book of, uh, there's this like collection of books. It's it's actually, it's it's fairly dry, but it's um, at least I read the first one. It's it's, but it actually tell goes through like all the magazine articles. It's like a collection written by an uh, this writer, um, who I think worked for a newspaper. I'm not sure. But it's called Choque, and it's about like the literal history of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like almost felt feels like year by year. Like it's how oh, cool. it inception. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and I mean, I loosely know about the history of it, but um, I'd love to deep dive into it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of just mixed martial arts in general. So the the um, the history of an entire system is very be very interesting to me. But maybe Ben can help you out with also uh, 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 that and uh, Elden Ring, because you were just talking. <laughs> we were literally just talking about how you were getting crushed. Oh, all the time. I got, I only, <laughs> Looking I only, at the flowers. I only summon. I can't. Yeah. I can't take anything on on my own. <laughs> Gotta summon people to help me. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's like a. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, dude. I've I've been there when when a game is just crushing your just soul. Just like. Yeah. I feel like that's probably like, why From Software calls them Dark Souls because they're, they're there to crush your soul. Like that's the game. But you know, like the gamer in me, because I used to be a pretty big, big time gamer when I was in high school. And I mean, I'm telling like I lived for this stuff for video mm-hmm. games. Yeah. Uh, the gamer in me would be like, it's probably not that hard, you know. Dude, and I'm not. sure I'm like, how many people? How many people go into that thinking that and being like, this game is eating me alive. No. <laughs> I know some people so. that are just super good at it and I'm like watching cuz it's all about timing like you got to roll your times and your weight your weapons are weighted so you got to weigh you got to it's all about like how you time those those shots. And I'm just so bad at that that I get crushed every time I play. <laughs> well, also <laughs> that yeah. Lord of Dornables asked me which boss is giving me the the most trouble. All of them. <laughs> all the bosses. <laughs> We take the bosses out of the game. That'd be great. <laughs> you could give me so much more. Think of how much time you have to walk around. Yeah, it'd be awesome. No, I've wa- I've watched oh. people play that game. That game is like you gotta like commit your. You have to ha- formulate a plan. Like you have to die a couple of times so that you can just understand what the heck is going on and match yeah, patterns. Yeah. It's kind of got like you know what. I don't, and I've never, I haven't played it yet, um, but it has a feeling of like an old school like video game, like Nintendo. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's the whole know, point, like, man. Of these, they like they're taking all the Dark Souls games, like they take that and they crank it up like crazy. Okay. Like the old school games. Yeah, like Castlevania. Over and over. And over. Yeah. Right. Yeah, where you died You're just over like, and over like, oh again. my god. Yeah. Like how how do they? There's no way I can beat this. Like, it's not designed to be, you're not designed to win, that sort of thing. It's a crazy mix of all of that. Like, it's got, like, smidges of Metroidvania equalities to them, like, where you have to kill certain bosses to get to certain areas in the game. Um, and then you can come back over areas before, you know, the, the, the way Metroid always played out. But then it's got, yeah. the, the, it's got that, like, you know, old school... Castlevania qualities of just being super duper hard. There's just a lot going on. They 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 figured out how to make the game punishing yet super addictive. Like the the sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, I see. That's like my game right there, though. That's like what I live for. Maybe I mean, I get get Elden Ring on. No, and see, I can't anything. can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. Don't 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 you're bad influence, me, Frodo. Man. Don't tempt me. <laughs> That's exactly what was in my head. <laughs> exactly what was in my head you know uh 
Uh, oh, I got a, uh, a question for me. Uh, Ray, what type of kind of style would you say this piece is? Looks like a loft with the light exploding into a gold off of certain things. Uh, and then Ashraka uh, Kitsune said, um, I thought it was a front porch of a house. It actually is a front porch of a house. Um, the style, uh, I don't know. How would you describe my style, Tyler? I don't have no I'd idea. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly. I describe it as Ray Bonilla style. That's what I describe it as. Like, well, like you know, it's kind of. I mean, realistic, right? I mean, but like with the painting yeah, I mean, quality I to it. I think we're both we're both pretty um, figurative. We're both trained figuratively, so. Yeah, yeah. So I would be I would be okay with that, um, with that description. So it's, yeah representational but not basically you know like classical but like an impressionist also, it's like about our approach too you know we're both like right now i think we're both kind of we're mixing up the color we want and then we're placing it yeah and then eventually we'll start to find detail and work but like right now we're trying this is basically like a lay-in so we're like we're we're kind of laying in the air the colors that we want to work with Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, this is not, this is like a, for, I know for me, it's still my first pass. Uh, and I'm going to go on top of this with color. So that that is also like, this thing is, I'm, I'm laying out all the values and I'm using uh, a technique called uh, an underpainting, basically. Uh, and this is, it's a monochromatic underpainting. It's just a, or some people call it a dead color stage uh, where I take one color, and that makes a light and a dark version of it. And I just worry about value in my piece or you know where the lights and darks are. And that way it serves as a guide for my color when I go on top of it. And can also provide uh, some nice uh, effects uh, when I put color on top of this this area. So, they, so the colors don't physically uh, mix, they optically mix. That's uh, what I should have yeah. done on my piece. So, it's a Dutch, old Dutch uh, way of painting, but it works. Still works today. Yeah, I mean, Dude, it's, it's this is looking like, great. If, well, if you're looking at like old school styles of painting, like this is kind of a cartoon, right? If if you're talking in like a Renaissance way of you're you're doing an underpainting. I'm doing like the, my cartoon basically was my line drawing, yeah, and then I'm yeah. basically. I establish it in premature, which is just basically a stain. Because there are a lot of fancy words. They sound really fancy. Here we go. Uh, and then, um, oh my God, what's the, uh, the, the, and so I'm, I'm painting on top of it. I'm basically over painting. So I'm, I'm painting just this. Is that grisaille? Is that the term for that? No, no, grisaille is a gray. It's a, it's a gray, but it's, a, this is like in a, basically like a, like a grisaille. Yeah, these are grays. You know, this is like a neutral gray. So I would say, yeah, this is a grisaille. Yeah. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Something like that. Yeah, it is a grisaille. It totally is a grisaille. Dude, at least your colors are accurate. Mine are wonk. Well, you know, my, my colors are, they're spot on because it's just monochromatic. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. I, so. I, didn't, I just set this camera up. And just to throw some excuses out there real fast. No, I Tyler just thinks like... Just set this camera up and uh, the colors are totally wrong. Like the, the oranges you guys are seeing are crazy fiery on the stream. Just, I guess it looks kind of cool. Dude, Tyler just thinks it's, you know, he thinks he can come in. Yeah, exactly. MPL Illustration knows what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> steal Mark Carter's paints. Yeah. I blame Mark Get Carter banned. for this. And then just set up his camera and act like his, like it's so easy what I do every single day. It's not. It's not at all. But you know what? I can take my time. I can take my time. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you joining, you know we. Uh, this is what we do. We just talk. We hang out. Talk about movies, video games, um, art. We do talk about art. Answer art technique questions and also just fun fun art art questions we sometimes get into uh you know uh arguments yeah usually losing arguments for good tyler um <laughs> yeah over things like star trek and 
but like you know what the best like star trek movie is stuff like that you know yeah which i would think gary oldman you. gary oldman or leslie nielsen that's funny <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, good man. I, like, I did enjoy. I did enjoy that. I'm a big go ahead. fan, so I did enjoy that one. Did yeah? Pick Leslie Nielsen over Gary Oldman. I dare you. I dare, I yeah. dare you. I dare you to do it. I dare you. No, do. I would never. I would never even dream of it. Oh God, jeez, that's really hard too. Like it's like man, the like, Gary Oldman's incredible, but you know it's like. It's, you know, it's like like a legendary actor, but like you think about Leslie Nielsen, it's just like, yo, know, you have some respect, my friend. Okay. Have you seen the Have you seen the footage of? It's like behind the scenes footage. I don't think it was in any of the behind the scenes, but it's come out kind of recently, and it's it's Francis Ford Coppola like yelling at Gary Oldman on set for Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like that scene. It's the scene that actually got cut it wasn't even used but it's it's like uh, dracula's walking up the stairs gary oldman he's walking up the stairs in the in castle dracula <laughs> and he's given some dialogue he's supposed to be they're going to adr dialogue over it right of him talking to like i think renfield um okay <laughs> he's doing this he's doing the shot right and Gary Oldman's just pantomiming <laughs> talking cuz it's a super wide shot right they're not up in right. close and and then like it goes like cut and then coppola like walks up he's like are you doing the lines are you saying the lines and gary oldman's like no i like i figured because it was such a broad angled shot that you know such a wide angled shot and we're just like silhouetted figures that um you wouldn't really need the lines um and he's like no what are you doing i need you to say the lines say the lines Oh God! You gotta find. That's this. so funny. It's so funny to, to watch him like, and then um, Gary Oldman's like, "All right, okay, all right, just let's just back up then." And oh, I love man. it. I love I'll it. Find the video I just love. All right, I gotta, I gotta watch that because it's you know it must be torture making movies like that, right? I mean, like the man's underneath. Everyone's under a incredible amount of stress. And he's on the, in that what? crazy costuming too, like that absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. Must have taken well, five just, hours to get the costuming on stuff. I just like, but it's this is Francis Ford Coppola. It's all I th- can think of him is like a man, in, like in in Apocalypse Now, in um, oh my god, the movie, uh, the making of the greatest making of ever. Um, what's it called? Why am I blanking on this? Wait, you just um, said Apocalypse Now? Yeah, Apocalypse Now. But like, what's the uh, what was the original title for Apocalypse Now? Because that's what the making of movie was was called. Oh, no, oh, I can't remember. But I know, I think I know what you're talking about. You can ask Ben. Ben, still- Hearts of Darkness, <laughs> Ben. That's it. For the Hearts win, of Darkness. Baby. That's it. Well, that's what done. talking about. Thanks, Ben. Coming in here like a champion. <laughs> Look at that. So that's that's what a, we do. We don't even we don't make a rear choke her. right there. Boom! Triangle choke on your face. <laughs> Boom! Down goes Tyler. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, yeah. So Hearts of Darkness is just like when his wife is like, it was like the monsoon. They got caught in monsoons or something like that, and they had to like cancel like all the shoots, and they're like bleeding millions of dollars, and like he's bankrolling it, so he's like just going bankrupts and he's he, all you hear is like the the sound of like you know uh just like him furiously typing in a typewriter and then like francis Coppola's wife is like it's like and then francis you know in his in his height you know in the height of like uh all of this did what he always did he's like he listened to opera and <laughs> You know, and and uh, made Italian and cooked and made Italian food. It's like, <laughs> oh and it's God. just like him at his like wits end, just cranking the opera up and just cooking food for no one. You know, basically, sometimes, you know, like sometimes they say you have to get it done, dude. That's incredible. Like the oh, that poor guy. I mean, I felt really bad for him when. When Brando's on the set and they're like going over the lines and like it's 
it's very like you can even tell that he didn't read the script <laughs> well yeah i mean he showed up like late hadn't read anything and he was like way heavy like way heavier than he's supposed to be because he's like supposed to be this like, like super special like ops green hundreds <laughs> it was like a hundred piles over with something nuts man you know they killed yeah. that cow That's right. too. Remember that shit? Yeah, they killed the cow. Yeah, they killed the cow. Yeah, they were originally. They were. Hey, Ben's right. He's like they were originally meant to be there for six months, but they were filming for like three years. Can you imagine that? Yeah, sometimes you got to go over budget, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I love how like, like George Lucas, this is like a young George Lucas saying like, yeah, you know, like I was slated to do it back in the can day can you imagine oh my god and he, what he wanted to do was go into an actual war zone because vietnam was still kind of wrapping up when they were thinking about this talk about a different what a different tyler kind of movie we would have received <laughs> can you imagine that that's like oh, 70s career, george lucas yeah the career trajectory would have been guys insane we never had we would not have had star wars it would have, he would have been yeah. a different kind of filmmaker Exactly. Ben's right. They were in a war zone anyway. Like the Philippines. Yeah, they, like, where the, were they the heli- shooting? The atta- well, the, the, attack, the attack helicopters, like were actual attack helicopters. That by, oh, I think yeah. it was like the Filipino. I think it was the Philippines, I think. I, I could be remember. wrong. I can't remember. It's been so long. But like they had to like leave because there were guerrillas like on the other side of the hill that they had to go bomb. And so they took the helicopters with them so they couldn't film. Dang. Like I mean, epic stuff, man. You know, that's nuts. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, bum, ba, ba, da. Yeah, I I argue that it's probably I like Hearts of Darkness better than the than Apocalypse Now mm. than the movie itself. All right, I I like um the the what was it the what did they even call it the like director's cut version the Redux. Oh yeah, uh, Redux. Yeah, I love the Redux. I got maybe I should watch Redux. I don't know if I which version I watched. It's like an hour long. Dude, Martin Sheen had a heart attack, almost died. Yeah. God. Not even that old. I don't know why. Lawrence Fishburg was it? No, he was like he was like fifty maybe. I I don't. I feel like he was younger. He's probably younger than that. But it was just like that scene when I remember the scene when they announced it. He was like, it was after the scene where he's just like crying naked in his room, <laughs> like he got drunk, was doing like combat yeah, moves. Yeah. Yeah, they were like, wait, you're all going on mission. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. He's all drunk and stuff, and then he's like crying and like. It's crazy. It's a crazy movie. Yeah, Larry Fisher was 15. If you haven't watched the Redux, I think you'll like it, man. It's really good. Okay. Okay. Well, I love. I love. yeah, the local the har- right. The helicopters in the film were local army helicopters, and sometimes they had to fly off mid shot to fight the war. Yeah, <laughs> I just there's this one scene where it's like, wait, you know, like Corporal is like, "Where are they going? Where are they going?" <laughs> uh, they got actual missions to do, Francis. It's like the guy's just like losing it, you know. Hey Ben, thank you so much. Yeah, incredible me. man You're thanks welcome anytime man thanks so much really appreciate it thank you to, to your viewers as well super awesome super awesome oh, yeah, take man. it easy man thanks for coming over awesome yeah oh yeah so the uh uh thanks man um yeah so that's i i i think i really like movies i think as an artist i think we we appreciate like movies that were bigger that have visions that were bigger than the status quo and in order to achieve those visions someone had to go through like hell to get through to get that vision mm-hmm. created because it literally wasn't it was Termin- right, terminator blade runner you know yeah um like you see these movies like they weren't made like they had a, there was a trial by fire and like because they were just creating star wars I mean, like, just, just think about, like, just the... Star oh. Wars, what's that one? What are you talking about? Star Wars Force Awakens, man. <laughs> Star Wars, the, oh God, what's the last one? What, was, what the hell did they call the very last one? I got it. Rise of Skywalker, maybe? That's it, that's it. 
That's it. Right? Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about, right? I thought. <laughs> I know, right? No, we shouldn't. Let's not get into a Star Wars chat. Well, I'm not going to bash it. Listen. Everyone's got opinions. Because everyone's got opinions. I wouldn't want to be in that. That I, I just, I wouldn't want to do it. If you were an actor, you wouldn't want to be in the movie. No, you're... I just wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't, if I was a director, I wouldn't want to do it. I, I don't know if I, as much as I love Star Wars. Oh, like, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's I like just, taking on a mantle that's too big. No, thanks. It just, you, you, you would never, yeah. No. I, I just, as an artist, I'd, I would love to work on it. But like, oh, man. Yeah, I, As a director, I agree. I don't I would, know. I don't if think, I was a yeah. director, I would. I think I would just say no, and they'd be like, "You're crazy! I can't believe you'd say no." And I'd be like, "I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with it. It's too." Dude, people get it's crazy, it's man. People get death. Th- I'm sure it's like people getting death threats and stuff like that. Like, just there's no way. There's no way Brian um, or Ryan Johnson, <laughs> guy who did the second one, the the Last Jedi. There's no way that guy. The Rain Rain. De- Rain Johnson, or I thought it was Ryan. Johnson, Anyways, yeah. There's no way that guy hasn't received death threats. It could be. It could be Ryan. Yeah, I mean, like, so you needed. So okay, so um, uh, <laughs> Eric Davidson said, "Have you seen the Mad TV Christmas spoof of Apocalypse Now? It's a clay motion, clay motion." <laughs> Animation done no. in the same style as the old Rudolph and Red Nose Ranger movie. No, I haven't. I have to see that. <laughs> Monkey House says that, that the uh, Obi Wan show comes out later this week. Yes, so there's even more opportunity for them to retcon your childhood good times. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like I gotta say, the Obi Wan uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, well, so I'll adventure so, into that right now. It looks kind of cool. Here's here's what I was thinking too. Like you got it. So this is where like the Mandalorian, like. Say what you want. I mean, some people didn't like the second season on it. I love the whole series, right? But like, let's just talk about it as like a concept. It's they did exactly what, like, what was needed after the last Star Wars movie, which was let's just go, sl- let's just go small. Like, yeah, why are we trying to one up? To satisfy everybody, so it's never gonna do it. And I think it took a per- it takes a person like. Favreau and like it just takes the right team to do that too and like I mean they ain't gonna I mean I, you're not gonna be a no name director and come in and be like yep yeah, we're gonna take things slow here's how we're gonna do Star Wars it's just not gonna work man you're gonna I mean you gotta there's so much money it's too much money behind that you know but for Favreau to come in I mean he's uh and it, people are gonna listen to him you know because he's got the clout to do that you know yeah, I mean, cross uh, Iron Man. Yeah. He's, he's, and Swingers. He's doing something to my <laughs> and Swingers. And Rudy, you know, Bruce Rudy. And Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did Swingers. No, uh, Tyler and I are referencing a... When I was in Rudy, uh, what was it called? It was a show that John Favreau had on, like, um, A&E, I think, right? Which what was this about? arts and entertainment channel. I don't know if anybody even knows that, but it was like they they invited actors, like a bunch of actors, and it was to a restaurant, and they had dinner, and they just filmed it. And these people were drinking. Favreau had a stogie every single time. I mean, it's just like oh, yeah, one yeah, of the I only rest, one of the last about. restaurants on earth that you could smoke in because grandfathered in and like eating porterhouses and stuff. <laughs> I don't think he does that anymore. So there's like a meme. There was a meme. The meme of the show was like Favreau would always reference swingers like every four seconds. And and uh, Kevin Kevin Smith was on the show and he started roasting, uh, you know, a Favreau about the whole thing. Like he's like, yeah, it's like, has John uh, mentioned swingers? Because he doesn't mention it every other like, he mentions it every other five minutes, you know. He should. It's a good movie. You know? uh, yeah, you know, so, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, dinner the, with Favreau. Chef, yeah, dinner good. with Favreau. That's, that's it. I think it might be a dinner. With, yeah, that's. Uh, oh, the chef show I haven't seen. It's good. It's good. Um, like oh no, I did see that show. What am I talking about? Yes, I did, because he did the movie Chef. Um, you know, he. It's such a really interesting 
director it's so hard to like pin down like man i can't believe that worked you know like when you look at that it's like what i can't believe that worked like the mandalorian it worked yeah i mean well, getting... I guess first first season it worked right but um yeah i liked i liked the second season so but uh you know I, yeah i mean i but the the the, 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 the yeah the first season i mean it was everybody would agree i, I mean at least most people would you know it, it was like stunner you know uh I, I don't know how to describe it it's so well balanced it's got the right people and they're all got the right roles if that makes sense like mm-hmm. i think that's the thing like everyone does is is playing to their strengths um it felt like in that movie like like carl weathers was perfect for that character you know um what's his oh, face perfect, was perfect man. for Mandalorian. Carl weathers. it's carl weathers i know that's like low-hanging fruit you know man's <laughs> you know he's just always great he's just always great so i mean like uh yeah um oh okay so yeah uh, so um yeah i mean i'm um yeah respect goes out to that i mean that's that's it's cool stuff i'm not gonna lie i'm i'm uh, I gotta say I'm, i won't lie either though. i like the first season of mandalorian but they lost me on the second it's man how do you follow that up yeah that's it right it's almost like um it's like Ricky Gervais says, like the the um, dreaded third series. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's well, a you know third series, or it's like a third or a second series. Like you can't even you can't even follow it up. It's just got to be that. It's like one movie. Just do the one movie. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's tough, man. I I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it was even designed. I don't, was it designed to go multiple seasons? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's I guess it's so. Disney, I guess right? so, they're right? Trying to, they're trying to, yeah. go, they're trying to go long on everything, I think. Yeah, yeah. And like, I've been, like, there's things like, like Moon Knight is another one. I want to like, see I that, but uh, I haven't seen it dude, yet. Dude, I've watched the first couple of episodes. I haven't finished it. I was the first couple of episodes. I'm like, I can't believe they nailed this. I can't believe it's, they nailed it this. It's good. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, at least, I mean, I'm like, I can't believe that this feels like a movie like someone understands the the source material oh my god mm-hmm. you know but like yeah, it sounds like it's a one shot too it sounds I, like they're not doing yeah anymore. yeah see like i don't see i don't see the point in doing more of that more of it like tell your story and get out and be like hey remember moon Knight," you know uh but it's a corporation they're you know their job is to make money and i totally get that um oh yeah for sure I mean, but like wandavision hard to argue with that you know like I love that. Talk about I, like, I thought that was awesome. Dude, like, talk about a crazy concept. Like, man, who? Like, that's trust right there, you know. Uh, and it's got to be with the right characters. Got to be with the right. I don't know. It's just got to be balanced, you know. It's like I don't, you know. Um, yeah, it's tough, man. I, I don't. Uh, that's got to be a tough position to be in. I mean, I I wonder what people like Carla, uh, Carla Ortiz, for those of you who don't know and like paulo and paulo rivera and like um it's just people who've worked on that you know how how much pressure they feel to kind of nail it or they just know that they can't you know they they have you know people who are making them were just as much just as big big fans as you know the people who are they're making the movies for so i guess they you know they have high standards too on it obviously but yeah, it's tough I mean, to be in that position where you're literally steering that ship. And they bring it all. They they've brought it all together very well. I think that the execution has been. I mean, the quality. Whether you know, maybe each movie's been up or down, whatever. But yeah, like as as like a giant franchise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, including the the shows they've been doing. That's the quality they've kept up is pretty impressive. Like say what you want about oh, yeah. So certain movies here and there that may not have been as good as the others, but god damn, that's consistency like crazy. 
Yeah, and just getting the right people to do it. I mean, that's the. I mean, sometimes it's a. And, and if it is bad, to be honest with you, they they fix it. Like, look sometimes at sometimes it's not even that bad. But yeah, what what do you mean? I know. I mean, like like for instance, like Thor. Yeah. First Thor wasn't good. Like it I was, agree. but I, I agree get it. You. They had Ken, they had Kenneth Branagh do almost like a um, Shakespeare thing, like Shakespeare. Yeah, and he was like, but, okay, that's why you would ha- yeah. hire that that director. And the same thing goes for um, what's his face who directed The Rocketeer. Yeah, Drew Johnson. Um, right. Drew, yeah. But yeah, but then for it the turns thing. out like the actual way to do Thor is to have Taika handle it, and he handled it unbelievably well. Which like talk about like. Because it did right, you're absolutely right. Because the second, the second one was a dark, the dark. Uh, yeah, world who directed or something like the that? second one, the the one with um, Mal Malekith. Yeah, but that was like okay. We need to lean into Lord of the Ringies more, less like. It's like them trying theatrical. to find the space for Thor. Yeah, and it. I don't think it worked. I thought it was average. It was better. I think it was better than the first one, but kind of average you know like okay whatever he's more of a background character and then it's just like you know uh ragnarok just opened the floodgates you know yeah and i mean um, i feel i feel like i I'm, I'm gonna give all the credit to taika for doing that but there was oh, i feel yeah. like a little bit of ground was was laid in the avengers first avengers movie like with the dynamic of like having thor yes. not be so serious I yeah, mean, very much like jokes, right? Like that Josh Whedon style of, uh, yeah, yeah, like Josh Whedon style of writing is like definitely echoed in that. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, Taika, what, what, uh, how, you, how you pronounce it? Waititi, Waititi, I think. Waititi, the... yeah. You know, has a really great sense of comedic timing and also how to do dramatic timing. Yeah. Like, God, he's. Oh, I mean, man. I love all of his his comedies that he's done over the years, like what we do in the shadows, oh, yeah. and he's always been a favorite of mine. And he's also, I mean, he's a he's a great actor too. So it's just like, he, I think he just understands like it's so great. I mean, Thor Ragnarok felt like a Jack Kirby, mm-hmm. uh, like if Stan, Stanley were, were writing today. Yeah, totally. Like, what would it be? Because it's very tongue in cheek, but like also serious, but like. Him understanding just felt, the source felt, material. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think, yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. Uh, Lord Durnable said, did you see how they made some type of kind of program to recreate Mark Hamill's voice by finding, feeding samples of his younger self's voice into AI? No. Oh, my God. Wow. Mark Hamill will never die. He will, live, he will live in Star Wars Dude. television shows forever. You know what? For me, I wouldn't even have shown his damn face. You knew who it was. Oh, and it just would have about This is what I yeah. This is what I didn't like about the Mandalorian season two. Don't show us him like you know spoilers for everyone, but him fighting the Cylons that looked like really bad Cylons didn't look like yeah. Star Wars to me. Um, yeah, that just got that just bugged me. Just the whole scene was just so weird. But having him take out those dudes like that easily shows you how powerful Jedi's are, right? Like legit. Yeah, sure. But they shouldn't. It shouldn't have. It's just don't even bother recreating. Is like I know the fans want to see it, but don't give him it. But you know, it would never happen though. That would just never. It's not realistic. That's what I was. I was like, don't show his face. Just be like, what yeah. the hell was that? And. Be like everyone knows this damn Luke Skywalker. Everyone knows. This is kind of how I just have with, him um, in Rogue One when they redid when they like digitally recreated Tarkin. It's like don't show his face. Like don't show his face. Just don't show his or face. Or like do the recreation that they did, which was was pretty impressive. Just so it kind of wasn't there yet. It was kind of like Jeff Bridges and Tron Legacy. Like it wasn't there yet. Have but, you um, what, rewatched that Jeff Bridges? It's thing? It's really not there yet. <laughs> it's not that. It's it there. I mean. But it's like, yeah, don't Grandma show Tarkin, about, but... just show him in a reflection, right? Don't show the whole deal. You know, you know what he looks like. Deal. Yeah. yeah. You know what he looks like. Same thing Same thing with Princess Leia at the end. You know what, he look, you know what they look like. Yeah, just you know show him from like. behind. It's like, boom, that's, that's it. it. That's even it. With, even with Leia, they showed her from behind in that shot. And it was like, that's it. And it was totally fine. 
I'm yeah. like, cool. Know who that I is. I know who that. I know yeah. who that is. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows. It's but but again, it's just you can't create art like that and and it's really difficult. I shouldn't say you can't create it in that space because obviously you have directors that are doing that, but you're just not gonna yeah. It's, you gotta have the right people do you know, steering that, making that decision. But Yeah. Yeah, cuz we're we're not the only ones that come up with that. I mean you know, I'm not that I foolish. I mean, maybe I'm the only one to come up with that, but like if you're saying it too, then we know that we're not the no, I'm joking. But like uh <laughs> you know, it's not like a we're good. <laughs> yeah. It's not a it, yeah, it's just it's an easy it's an easy argument to make, but I can also see why it didn't happen. I mean, I think ultimately they are, Disney is pushing towards like recreating people that aren't basically actors in the more, people either dead or not in the, not in the game anymore, right? Like they want to go back over old territory and bring those people back in. Why not? Yeah. I don't know if it's a good well, idea, you, but it seems like it's what they're after. Well, you know, they can do it with like they did it with like Kurt Russell. I'm in, still blown uh, away by that. I do not know how they did that in the second Guardians movie. Yeah, and then also yeah, uh, looked, Samuel Jackson in. Um, yeah. It, it was a it was a blending of things. It was blending a lot of stuff, and I think they had him there. So. Yeah, they had him there. But I think their ultimate goal. I don't. You know, I can't speak for exactly what disney has planned but you know eventually they they won't have the actors there is my point they're gonna have to yeah. they're gonna have to recreate them digitally to do these things that they want to do or just come up with something new dude tell me about it but th that's beside the point <laughs> <laughs> just come up with something new come on just come up with something new like I'm, I'm like I love James Cameron, but come on, dude, we don't need four more Avatar movies. And I, lo and I enjoyed dude. the first Avatar movie, and the new trailer looks cool and everything. But let's do new, let's do new stuff. Yeah, I know. Well, he's been working on that for so long. I know. I'm sure it'll be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating it being really beautiful and, and groundbreaking and all that. But come on. He was. He, I watched this thing with it was I think GQ talking with directors and stuff i don't know it was like a director's conversation sponsored by gq and it was denis venue venue yeah One of my yeah favorites. and and cameron and mm -hmm. he was talking about how he had like you know it's like oh yeah two and three are pretty much two's done you talk about avatar two's done yeah, and they're all wrapped up yeah. th three's wrapped up two and three are wrapped up fours i got the first draft done so he's like making these movies and like, they, I mean, it's going to be a. Yeah. He's doing them in 60 uh, frames too, which is. Oh. Ugh, I hate it. I hate 60 frames. Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. If anyone in the chat who's unaware of this, um, I'm sure you were all, because we've probably ranted about it before. But um, for The Hobbit. Um, Peter Jackson decided to go with 60 frames per second, which is insanity. I thought he did 48. No, they did 60. Maybe it oh, was 48. Wow. Anyways, maybe it was 48. Either way, it was, it was much higher than film, which is 35. Um, sorry, 24. No, 24. Uh, 24 on 35. Um, 35 millimeter. So it's it's just... Uh, off-putting to the human eye to see it's called the soap opera effect it makes the movie look super unrealistic and i hate it and i really don't want to see avatar again in that frame rate but i guess that's what we're getting so did you watch it with the first one you watched that frame rate no they didn't do the first one in that frame rate they did the hobbit oh. in that frame rate and which i didn't I, yeah oh, i didn't watch so, the uh it was a terrible movie going experience there was only one place where I, you know, where I lived that had it, and it was like the show times just weren't conducive to my schedule at the time. And I was like, I should probably see it now. And and then I, I remember asking you, you're like, don't do it, man. 
It's just that don't do it. They, you know, it's the it's, they call it the soap opera effect for a reason. It looks bad. Um, it it looks like it takes the the all the motion blur out. So like all the everything that makes movie magic is gone. So it ends up the the best way I could describe it is it looked like it looked like a stage play. Like the Hobbit looked like a stage play. It was so obviously on a set with foam core and you could see everything. You could see that you could see the, the, the mesh that makes up the wig. You could see all of that stuff. You lost yeah, all but... of the um, all of the magic, essentially. Well, this this is a great uh, great thing to end on. Um, Monkey I said sixty frames per second can't fix a bad script. And with that, 100%. it is, it is, we are at the top of the hour, my friend. Oh my gosh, we're done. already here. I didn't even notice. Time we're done. Time flew. Um, this is how far I got. Um, Looks great, dude. We'll go a little over time so that we can do our sign out. But yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, this is about know, how far I got. <laughs> stream it, stream I might, it now. Because I'm going to be wet paint for a while, I'll probably... I don't know. I might just leave it and, and hit back in next week, assuming that it's still wet. Yeah. Or um, be wet. we'll see. Yeah, I bet it'll still be wet. Yeah. Looks so, awesome. Um, yeah. Thanks, man. I'm just kind of chunking. I'm still blocking in. I'll probably have to do some. On the stream, it looks way, the blues are way more intense and the oranges are way more intense. Like everything's different than how I'm seeing it, but I'm trying to ignore that. That's how about okay. you, man? How'd it go on your you end? Blame it look great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're getting there. I think we're uh, almost uh, done with the center painting. I'm going to probably just go straight to color and tighten this up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I'll go back into nice, it man. with oils. But, yeah, so we'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tackle that definitely uh, next week uh, for sure. So um, with that being said, I think we're done. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, uh, for for being patient with our, our break and then just joining us today, the questions, the um, the the raids, David Peterson, uh, Ben Van Leer, you know, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, guys, I want everyone to check out their streams as well. Um, and thanks to all the guest artists always popping in, uh, like Denman. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, Ray Bonilla. Uh, you can find my work at RaymondBonilla.com or on Instagram at uh, Ray Bonilla Painter. And who are you, sir? I am Tyler Jacobson. And yeah, it's been great coming back. It's been good to be back. It's been a month. Um, you can find me at, at Tyler Jacobson Art on my Instagram. Uh, you can see in the moot bot right there. But um, for those of you just watching and don't see the chat, I'm also TylerJacobsonArt.com. So... Come check us out. Uh, good to see you. Yes. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this on uh, on demand on YouTube. Uh, we really appreciate that. And we, we do uh, try and read the comments every, uh, you know, when we when we do get a chance. And uh, some of the comments on there, I mean, just are super wonderful. So if you are watching on YouTube, please consider uh, subscribing, uh, hitting a like button. It really does help out the stream uh, and, you know, expand our visibility. And also check out our Instagram uh, at Live Brush, uh, where you'll see announcements for every show. Uh, and also fun art things and the stories and things like that that are regularly updated. So, uh, all right, man. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks, Ray. We'll see everyone later. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day right. and a great week. See you next time. See you next week. <laughs>